Small groups have gathered to protest for the second day over a teacher's use of a cartoon depicting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Religious leaders and politicians are now calling for calm in Batli after the advent of this cartoon row. Now joining us, we have uh, Robert Carter, who joins us from the United Kingdom. He's a journalist and researcher. Robert, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. Three, three teachers have been suspended in relation to uh, the showing of uh, images of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Batli Grammar School. Tell us more about this development. Sure. Well, obviously, the story originally broke uh, about a week ago. It's uh, initially involved one teacher that we knew of who had been suspended from the school following protests outside its gates. Uh, These protests were, of course, by uh, local Muslims and were led particularly by concerned parents who had children at that grammar school. Now, what they were upset about is the showing of insulting cartoons of Islam's holy prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. As you know, Uh, this cartoon was taken from the Charlie Hebdo magazine, which is the racist uh, and Islamophobic French magazine, which, of course, has been in the headlines before for, again, insulting Muslims, insulting Islam and depicting the holy prophet in an insulting way. The teacher showed them during a religious education lesson. However, with the story now developing, we're starting to slowly get more and more information coming out. Now, I've spoken to some of the parents in Batley and actually went up to Batley after the protests began uh, to speak to some of the uh, local community members. And it appears that it isn't just one teacher that's involved. And as you as has now been made clear, there have been more suspensions from the school. It appears as though the the issue of Islamophobia at Batley Grammar School has been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, What's happening now is British media is portraying the protest movement as uh, a kind of radical uh, Islamist uprising, uh, when in fact, these are parents who have been complaining uh, for some time behind the scenes, trying to go through legitimate means of making a change uh, to their children's education, but the school has basically ignored them. And we're now looking at a potential scandal, which is much bigger than one teacher. It could be institutional Islamophobia within the school uh, from top yes. to bottom. That's what we could be looking at here. But of course, we're waiting for more details to be released. Now, as you've indicated, that this issue may have been going on for quite some time now. And the fact that parents have been you know, using the channels behind the scene to address the issue. Uh, Is that an indication as to why they have not yet spoken to the media directly? Or what do we make of the fact that up until this point, it hasn't come to the fore in the public and the open? Well, it's very tricky. Uh, Initially, the parents wanted to deal with it as any parent would. They wanted to sit down with the school. They wanted it discussed and they wanted it dealt with internally. They wouldn't just go straight to the media. However, when the school showed no interest in taking their concerns seriously, and of course, the teachers continued their type of education uh, on blasphemy, which was, of course, designed to offend Muslim students for the sake of offending them, uh, then, of course, things started to escalate. Uh, The protest movement was quite spontaneous. Uh, A lot of the media was caught, uh, you know, by total surprise. There was no announcement that it was going to take place. But this was, of course, because tensions were running high and emotions were getting uh, out of hand. Uh, But of course, what we have to make very clear is once the media got involved, then, of course, mainstream media began spinning anti-Muslim narratives, which is quite common here in the UK. Islamophobia is a popular newspaper seller. So headlines such as, you know, crazy Muslim parents or angry Muslims screaming outside of school has become quite popular now. So what's happened is the parents are now very, very frightened, many of them. Uh, I've spoken to them. They don't want to appear on camera. They, they're they very shy about speaking to the media because they know that if they say the wrong thing, if they speak to the wrong journalist, they could quite easily be portrayed as an extremist or a fanatic. And many comparisons are being made unfairly between these parents that just want the best for their children. They want their children's religion and faith to be protected in public schools. They're being compared to the to the to the murderer who killed a teacher in France some months ago. And this is totally unfair. They're being uh, portrayed as uh, threatening and intimidating teachers at the school, which, again, isn't very true, Uh, especially the parents I've spoken to. 
all along since beginning to where we are now. They've never issued threats. They've never called for the death of any teacher. Far from that. They just want this issue dealt with and they have legitimate concerns as uh, British Muslim citizens. Yes. Uh, are there any substance to the reports that are suggesting that the police have kept the teacher in hiding? Uh, yes, that is true. Um, the uh, Depending on uh, which source you take the information from, it appears as if uh, the teacher may have received uh, actual death threats. We don't actually know, but that has been reported. Uh, the teacher has allegedly said that he does fear for his life. And also uh, his father, the teacher's father, has spoken to the media and he has released a lot of information saying that, you know, he is under police protection. Uh, he has indeed been suspended. The school is investigating the incident at hand, but no ruling has been made on his actual future yet. So we still have yet to see whether he'll return to the school, whether he'll uh, you know, be permanently let go. This is all uh, you know, still in the air at the moment. But yes, he has been uh, gone. He has been taken into police protection. But the, the debate is, was it necessary? Did he receive actual death threats? We haven't seen any physical proof of that, just uh, media reports. So there's still a lot of question marks surrounding what's actually happening. And there's certainly huge question marks surrounding uh, the, this, this uh, apparent concept of you know, Muslims descending on Batley and threatening to kill people. I haven't seen any evidence of that so far, only what's been reported in other newspapers from the side of the teacher in question. So, you know, the facts, is, there's a lot of question marks surrounding what's actually been said, what's actually happened. But from what I've seen and from what people I've spoken to in Batley, um, they're actually dealing with it in a very calm sensitive way especially given the fact that you know they're deeply hurt and upset by this whole fiasco will the batley grammar case be a test case for the rest of the country that if teachers get away with insulting islam here it will soon happen in other schools uh, well that is what the um the muslim protesters fear it's it has escalated to the point where it's not just about batley anymore uh, there is uh, the british muslim community as a whole from you know, the top of the country right down to London, has become interested in the story. And there are huge fears by British Muslims that this could be the, the, the baby steps towards introducing this type of um, you know, cartoon depictions into RE education lessons across the country, entering it into the national curriculum, if you like. This has already been seen. Uh, there is an obsession within uh, the British education system of trying to change Muslim beliefs, trying to teach young Muslim children in this country, at, while they're at an impressionable age, that many of the things that they have been taught by their parents at home, by traditional Islam, uh, is not actually right. It doesn't match uh, Western you know, quote unquote, Western or British values. Uh, and they're trying to basically uh, indoctrinate them uh, to follow a different understanding of either the religion or just to basically abandon it completely. A latest example I can give you, there's another school in London, Pimlico Academy, which has been uh, basically outed as having institutional racism. The head teacher there apparently has got a problem with students wearing the hijab and has made efforts to try and convince certain students to stop wearing the hijab under the guise of, you know, it's not uh, traditional British values. Uh, so that's another example I can give you. It's not just the Batley issue. Uh, also, about a year ago, there were protests in the city of Birmingham over uh, a, a new education of LGBT uh, and uh, same-sex marriages being introduced to Muslim-majority schools in Birmingham um, to basically try and teach those children that, look, same-sex marriage is totally okay. If you're being taught that it, that it that you don't believe in it, then that's wrong. You have to change that. That's not right. And obviously, as we know, Islamic values uh, teach otherwise. So this is not the case of Muslims trying to force Sharia law on Britain, which is what a lot of the media is saying. It's actually the opposite. It's British, secular, uh, atheistic values being forced on Muslim majority schools, it appears. And this is the problem that Muslims have. We're not trying to force our views on others, but we don't want our views to be forcefully changed, especially when it involves uh, our children. Certainly, and uh, this is certainly a course that we need to stand firm on. Robert, we appreciate your time. Jazakumullah khair for joining us. Uh, we appreciate how you've broken it down and given us an overview of what has transpired.
Jazakallah khairan. Thank you very much for having me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi.